back to another guitar themed version of the fine line between stupid and clever and this time I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole um, I'd always wanted to build a clear epoxy guitar um, everything I, I think the first time I ever saw a clear guitar was in the Georgia satellites video for uh, keep your hands to yourself so a little reference there um, and I thought that it was, uh, I've seen a lot of videos done on them, and I thought it was my turn to give it a try. Um, so I'm going to show you in this video how I took this here, Les Paul uh, copy bolt-on neck version of a body, and uh, went through the whole molding and casting process and came up with an epoxy guitar, which... Um, I actually like a lot. Uh, the problem with it is it's just really heavy, but uh, I think there might be um, alternative ways to work with it. The The process of building this guitar has got my mind spinning on um, a lot of other projects that I'm thinking about doing next. So this could turn into a whole series of guitar uh, videos on epoxy-based topics. Um, anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, I don't care if you share it or like it or subscribe or any of that stuff. This is just for my fun to make the video. So, uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, hope you have some comments and let me know how you like it. So the first step was to build a mold that I could pour the silicone into over the guitar body to cast the silicone mold. I thought I would do this with reusable plywood that I would have the capacity of reutilizing the mold um, multiple times. Um, I also thought it would be easier to demold it that way, and I turned out to be quite wrong in that aspect. So I got the guitar body and the mold all clamped down onto and level onto melamine uh, board. Um, the idea with that clamp in the middle of the mold is it was going to be able to separate into two parts and assist in the demolding process. Um, the one thing I did not do adequately enough was I did not seal the wood to the melamine with enough uh, caulking as I should have, and I did get quite a bit of leaking. I purchased a one-gallon silicone kit off of Amazon called Tekka Ruse, and it worked really well. Uh, about one gallon is what you need to make uh, a silicone mold of a guitar body, typical electric guitar body. I did invest in a small vacuum chamber for degassing the silicone as well as the epoxy. Um, and this actually worked out quite well, well worth the expense if you plan on making more than one guitar. It's time to demold and I'm a little bit nervous. Um, this took a whole gallon of silicone um, poured in over the body and I built the mold uh, surround here out of wood that can be detached into two pieces. Hope Fully keeping it all intact so I'll be able to use it again in the future. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about this part. Uh, I did have some problems with some silicone flowing underneath the mold. I didn't seal it as well as I should. I've learned my lesson before that next time, but uh, wish me luck. Here we go. Uh -huh. Oh, geez. All right. I'm a heck of a time just fitting a putty blade underneath it. You know, there are videos of people doing this and they seem to have trouble too, but not as much trouble as I'm having here. But I also think it's because I had so much silicone that leaked underneath the uh, the frame. I think that's why it's sealing it down so hard. <laughs> it is stuck. Uh, where's the grip? And I didn't really give 
myself enough ledges on the edges to grab from. I've only got like less than a quarter of an inch to pull up on. And I can't get much of anything going on that, on that. Oh, wow. Ouch. This feels like, oh. Oh, that felt good. A little bit. There we go. Now I wonder if I lefty loosey righty tighty. Maybe I can unscrew the whole thing. screw okay Seems like I, I did not use any kind of a mold release on the wood which probably was not a good idea mind's eye that was supposed to happen in like two minutes that was a mess do that or not without yeah okay so far so good oh 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 them Oh, geez, the detail's amazing. Well, that was exhausting. I wasn't even expecting this, but just because the way that the um, silicone was leaking underneath the guitar, it actually filled the uh, routing cavity for the pot in the body in the body that was there. And like to every bit of detail, even you can see the detail of the tape, the Gorilla tape that I used to tape up the holes. Here's kind of an up close of the detail that the silicone really got. You can even see the threads that came out of the uh, screw holes from the neck pocket, which is pretty awesome. Even the threads from the uh, pickup pockets as well. Okay, it feels like it's been forever, but I'm finally ready to pour my guitars here. Uh, I've got this ice cast epoxy and a uh, mix off of Amazon, which is now no longer available, but it's a three gallon kit, it's about 180 bucks. And frankly, I can't remember what the documentation said the cure time or the pot time is this. So I'm a little bit nervous that if I'm not paying attention, I could get into trouble. One interesting aspect I'm trying out is on the Les Paul, I wired the, um, the control cavity negative block uh, plug, so to speak, um, to this uh, scrap piece of aluminum C-channel, and I can lay it right over the orientation where I want the cutout to be for the control cavity, and that way I don't have to actually route out the control cavity from the back, and it saves me a little bit of epoxy. So um, I hope that works. That'll be interesting. The other thing I did is I eliminated and deleted the um, front, <clears throat> the, the neck pickup space or plug from the Les Paul uh, model so that I can uh, choose uh, as a general prototype to have a single pickup guitar body and then I can always route out the neck pickup again if I want to. So I thought I was going to go ahead and do both uh, guitars at the same time but I thought it would be best to push pause and see what happens here with the Les Paul. Um, this is a little bit terrifying. Uh, the degassing process in the degassing chamber 
man, I mean, I left it in there for 10 minutes and it still had this huge white coat of bubbles on it. And I've seen it done in videos many times of popping the bubbles with, a, and I used a little creme brulee blowtorch and it worked great. But the problem is if you look really down deep in there, there's still, and there you can see in this light, there's still bubbles popping. I'm gonna run through with a blowtorch again here in a little bit, but down, even down deep against the walls on the inside, you can see there's some small bubbles around the edges. I don't know if those are gonna lift out before it cures or what. Um, I'm, you know, when you look, take a step back this far away, you know, if I'm two feet away, it looks perfectly clear. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great cosmetic result regardless. But um, I'm just, before I uh, do the Telecaster, I'm gonna let this one play out and, and see where I wind up in case I wanna do something different. Number one, don't use one of these things when you mix it. It made the bubbles insane in there and it took for, and that, uh, that took a lot longer to degas the first round of epoxy than the second round of epoxy that I mixed by hand and it mixed just fine by hand. So uh, we'll see how it turns out. But so far, I mean, aside from growing a few gray hairs, I think it's gonna work. Okay, so it's been a full 36 hours and um, got some interesting ripples around the edges, I can see, and it feels like it might've domed up a little bit, but it cured nice and solid. Um, this stuff takes a long time to cure compared to other epoxies that I've used for other purposes. But I think that's just because it's um, uh, exothermic and uh, the long pour stuff needs to cure very slowly so it doesn't get too hot. Um, so we're gonna demold it and see what we got. Okay, so this thing demolded like a dream. It came out so easy, it was really nice. The hardest thing was getting out the little uh, additional uh, piece for the control cavity, and that came out really, really nice on the body too. Um, the the side that was the, the back of the guitar, um, the edge, I don't know if you can see this very well, but there is this kind of sharp edge that kind of goes all the way around the, uh, the body, which is obviously where it kind of uh, tended up again, but the general, clarity is really awesome there are some bubbles on the uh what is the top of the guitar but i think i'm going to be able to sand those out um there's also the area where i had carved out the um uh intake for the uh bridge pickup is pretty messed up because the silicone was not really smooth that but i, I think i've got plenty to work with to smooth all this out and make it really clear i hope i can get those bubbles out that were stuck on the on the bottom beyond the bridge but so far i'm really pleased it's pretty heavy but um no cracks in it and i think it's got stuff to work with it'll be fun to to polish it up and see what it looks like when it's done there she goes <laughs> so there are tons of videos on polishing epoxy so i'm going to spare you that but here's some before and after comparisons using a black background I'm really terrified right now. Um, I've got the drill press set up to drill the uh, holes for the bridge post and the tunematic bridge. I'm hoping that this goes okay. I'm gonna go really, really slow. Power. Real slow. So actually that went quite smoothly. I had to stop multiple times because I would get these uh, epoxy ringlets around my marker to know my depth marker. So I had to stop it multiple times just to, to pull that off. All right, I got all the holes drilled and I'm quite relieved that it went well. Um, I did use a drill bit that is just a smidgen wider than the post anchors, um, but they fit in nice and flush. They don't rattle around. Uh, I'm wanted, I did not want to go on the short end of on the on the smaller size because I didn't want to tr trust tapping these in with a hammer on the epoxy. I don't know what that would do, and I didn't want to ruin the whole project. So it's likely that I'm going to need to uh, seat the uh, tailpiece uh, posts in a little bit of epoxy to get them to stick. Uh, but the bridge posts should stay in just with string tension without any problem. Um, but overall, really really happy. It's a great next step. Now I'm going to do the same thing and uh, drill the uh, screw holes for the neck pocket. This makes a fun sound. By the way, I thought about drilling these holes uh, freehand with a drill. That would have been a complete disaster. 
um, would not attempt this without a drill press. All right, so I got it all strung up and built. Um, I did a really super simple build. I just used the original Glary pickup that it came with. Um, I had to drill holes uh, with an airline long, uh, foot long airline drill bit uh, to connect the bridge to the control cavity, as well as uh, to ground the pickup next to the, the bridge um, post. Um, the biggest issue this guitar is its weight. Uh, it weighs 10 and a half pounds, which in comparison that Gibson or, or the Epiphone uh, Les Paul with the Bigsby Tremolo was eight and a half pounds. So it's two pounds heavier than that. So that's my biggest criticism about it. Um, it's strung up nicely. Uh, I still have, it's not super playable and it would need a little bit of work on the nut and some of the fretwork and stuff. But uh, as a proof of concept for an epoxy guitar, I think it was quite successful. I also noticed that um, despite my best efforts and what I thought was my best effort in finishing it, uh, if you look at it in tangential light, you can still see some swirly marks um, from one of the sanding stages where I didn't do the best job. Uh, so taking it apart and refinishing it might be uh, something to do in the future. So there you have it. I hope you had some fun watching and uh, maybe you'll decide to make your own or cast your own body one of these days. If you have any ideas for things that you would like to see put in a, like an epoxy guitar, let me know because I might just build another one here pretty soon. Um, so thanks for watching. Catch you next time on the fine line between stupid and clever.